G'day YouTube, Max right here, and uh, it's a, like, a very interesting day in the markets today. I want to um, talk a little bit about that. We're going to talk about the, really the, the broader economy, the macro economy. We're going to talk about the Dow Jones Index. We're going to talk about the strength of the US dollar. We're going to talk about Bitcoin, of course. And so we'll get into that into just a minute. I did want to mention um, I was advertising for a position, and thank you so much for everybody's inquiries. I don't have time to get back to everybody, but the position has been filled. So um, if uh, you know who you are, um, and you'll, you'll, you guys will meet John uh, a little bit later if you uh, interact with Success Council support at all. But um, yeah, so that position has been filled. Thank you very much for everybody's inquiries. Okay, let's get into this here. Um, so man, just so many interesting things. Let's start with the Bitcoin price. First thing I want you to notice here, we're on the daily and we had this really big green candle today. So I mean, we're up uh, $2,300 today, up 5% for Bitcoin, uh, up 6% for Ethereum I'm seeing so far. Big green candle. And let's just see what's going on. I'll, I'll, just, I'll just jump around some charts, draw your attention to some things. And, uh, and then I'm just looking, I feel like a, here we go. There we go. A little bit more in the uh, picture there. Um, let's go look at the Bitcoin dominance. So I've, you know, less reliant at the moment. Um, but again, we, we, we did, we did come down and hit this low. And we bounced right off this support line at the 30, at the 40, 39.7. I mean, a little bit of action here, but you could argue we set a higher low here. So a low and then a higher low. Uh, and then again, big green candle today, good day for, for Bitcoin. I just want to, I'm just going to draw your attention to stuff, put it in your back pocket. We'll try and tie it all together at the end, okay? Next, I want to come down here and I want to look at the Dow Jones. And this is a particularly unattractive chart. So you'll notice that the Dow Jones has had a lower high and now a second lower high, right? It had a low and now it had a lower low. And we don't know, perhaps we're on our way to a lower low. So look, three consecutive lower highs, two consecutive lower lows. Um, and we're just starting to interesting. And we do have this pretty um, important area of support resistance. You'll see right here at that 33,300, it was support. Right, and this um, so this is taking us all the way back to April this year, okay? Uh, and then you can see here that it was uh, resistance right here back in March. So this is a pretty important line in the sand. This um, this yellow resistance line right here at that thirty three three hundred mark, okay? I'm watching this closely. If breaking below that, I would see a bearish sign. Because here's my challenge: I'm seeing a whole bunch of bearish signs in the broader markets in the macro uh, economy in the stock market, in the, dollar, in the dollar strength. Let's take a look at that one now. Um, so let's see, this one, so you'll see here the dollar strengthened, it broke through this resistance here significantly. And we are now, it's actually, uh, it's at its high for this year. So this is going back to the start of the year, right? And for the first time we broke above that 93.6. By the way, why the hell is the dollar strength important? Typically, what's happening now in this you know, massive central bank environment, money printing environment. Whew, hang on. <coughs> Pardon me. Oh, they came on me so quick I couldn't hit pause. I'm sorry, you had to live through a half sneeze there. Um, so yeah, typically the, if the dollar is strengthening, it means everything else is weakening. And typically the dollar trades in the opposite direction of everything else. Stock market, Bitcoin, crypto, gold, silver, all of it, right? And so right now, I want to draw your attention to, we had the dollar spike today, quite significant. It broke through this line of resistance and shot up very, very quickly, all in one day. That's a big move for one day for the dollar. Now, I want to draw your attention to this uh, line of resistance. I think this is a far more important line of resistance. You can see, you know, this is a big line of resistance. So the dollar... This one goes all the way back to September 2020, okay? And that was a line of resistance here. If we go back a little bit further, it was a line of support, okay? So it crashed through in this period, came back up and turned the uh, support into resistance and we haven't been able to break above it yet. So this is 94.6, let's call it, 94.6. and. I think we might see some fireworks here. If the dollar strengthens above 94.6, um, that will probably mean at the same time, the stock market, let's call it the Dow Jones, will probably, if that happens, the Dow Jones will probably simultaneously crash through this line of support, right? So 
Um, that has me a little bit scared. You have, we have the whole Evergrande thing, and you, you never know what's going on. You don't even know what's going on in uh, US companies, let alone Chinese companies. We have no idea of the contagion. We have no idea how many knock-on effects are going to happen as a result of the Evergrande um, default. So, you know, you've got this big catalyst. Some people are calling a Lehman moment, right? And remember, you, you, we think back to 2008, we think it all happens in a day. It doesn't. It took, like, it took about a year and a half for the real estate market to climb down um, as far as it was going to go. Stock market moved a little bit faster, but it didn't happen in a day. These things take weeks and months to develop. You have, you know, some company announces, uh, so you've got Evergrande announcing it's this event, and then, you know, nothing happens. It's all behind closed doors for a good couple of like months until the end of the quarter, say, until all of a sudden you find out some other company was heavily invested in that. They were the ones uh, who owed that debt. And all of a sudden, without that debt on their balance books, writing that down 75%, all of a sudden they're insolvent. And then, well, who were the investors in that company? And what, what's, um, what uh, debt did they have? And all of a sudden, it just takes weeks and months to cascade out. So we, we don't know how big this Evergrande is. And maybe it's a big catalyst, maybe it's not. Looking at the charts, I just see all kinds of problems. There's just all kinds of problems. The dollar is strengthening in a big way, big move today. You've got the Dow Jones looking weak. You've got the uh, S&P looking weak. I didn't take a look at uh, precious metals, but it looks like it's up a little bit. Let's take a look at what gold did. Uh, so interesting, gold had a green day too which is interesting. I mean, I'm talking about bigger, broader things here. So what happened in the last day? I just found it interesting. Bitcoin and gold traded with the dollar. Typically, as a general rule, that the opposite happens. The dollar strengthens, everything weakens. Okay? This time, we found that the stock market got hit. The dollar strengthened, but Bitcoin and gold also strengthened. It's just an interesting, interesting little uh, concept there. It's a little bit different than what we've been seeing. Now here's where I'm absolutely torn, right? I'm just going through a little bit of few charts here. I hope you see that we're close to some lines of support, lines of resistance, breakthrough moments in some really, really important factors in the macro stuff. And if it breaks through, we're gonna be breaking through several important things on several different charts at the same time. And it could signify a, a really, a, a seriously bad time for the stock market and economy and whatever else. Um, so we need to know that it's there, right? At the same time, the on-chain metrics for Bitcoin are just really, really good. Like, so good. Some of the best we've seen in a long time. And while I wouldn't necessarily expect Bitcoin to go, like, have a good run here in the next day or two, I think in the next few weeks leading into November and December, it just ties in perfectly to A, my thesis, B, the data I'm seeing with the on-chain analysis, um, I'm expecting those months to be very, very good for crypto. But all of that will pale into comparison if we see a broader macro um, struggle. If we see the stock market pull back, we see the, um, the Dow Jones pull back like a significant amount, 10% plus, you're going to see Bitcoin and the rest of the crypto market get hit. And so I'm just, I, I really want to be in crypto. I want to like, maybe like, so in the portfolio management system, you guys know I've got plenty of cash. I don't, I could be survived for many years without having to sell any crypto or any of my investments. That gives me the safety, the security that I'm never, if something bad happens, I can wait for it to come back because I think Bitcoin uh, will and gold will come back very, very quickly. Silver as well. Bitcoin and precious metals are going to come back relatively quickly if there is a crash, right? So I don't mind being a little bit heavily weighted in crypto. But I would just like to just slide the scale a little bit. I would like to dial up my, um, my crypto exposure a little bit heading into the end of this year because I think it's going to be really good for Bitcoin if everything else stays the same. But we've got this issue here. We've got the dollar strengthening. You've got news and headlines with the Evergrande situation. You've got the Dow Jones um, faltering to two consecutive lower highs one consecutive lower low, and it's just starting to look like if it plays out, it could. Now, if these things all bounce, like these are, these are important lines of resistance and support for a reason, can also bounce off of these things. So if it bounces off of these things, then okay, great. In that case, I'm thinking that, um, you know, the, the rest of the quarter is going to be fantastic. Not the rest of the quarter. Well, yeah, we start a new quarter next tomorrow. The rest of the, so the next quarter is going to be fantastic for crypto. Like absolutely mind blowing. I wouldn't be surprised if we see all time highs. That would not shock me if we saw $100,000 before the end of the year and possibly significantly higher. 
So I just want to bring your attention to this. It's like, okay, thanks, Max. There's a whole bunch of information. It's like, but what do we do? It's like, it's a really, really tough one. It's like the on-chain metrics and the Bitcoin market says go higher, faster now in the next three months. The other market says be very, very cautious. And it has a lot of control over the crypto market. It's kind of like, you guys know this well being in crypto. It's like, you know, you invest in your favorite altcoin. Well, if Bitcoin shits the bed, you know your altcoin's getting hurt. Same is true. If the broader market shits the bed, you know that crypto is going to get hurt. Um, and so it's just, it's time to be cautious. Um, time to be cautious. So I just wanted to give you that update and let you know what's going on in the market. There's a lot of really interesting things to watch in the broader markets. So guys, if that was useful, if that was helpful, please go ahead and hit that like button. Let me know in the description. Are you going heavier into crypto? Or are you going into safer assets? You're going back to dollars. You tell me. I'd love to find out what the consensus in the community is and I'll speak to you guys soon. Take care.